there, it's Dave Humpers from hpylorisymptoms.com. Another quick video about H. pylori for you, this time focusing on specific foods that we know from the scientific literature have an anti-H. pylori or H. pylori fighting effect. I'm going to launch straight into explaining or describing some of these foods to you. They're basically foods that you can just grab at any old supermarket, so they're very, very easy to get hold of and very, very convenient. The first food that I want to talk about is cabbage juice. Uh, cabbage juice has been used for centuries, probably millennia even, in Europe as an ulcer remedy and a, a remedy for heartburn and acid reflux. So a little bit of cabbage juice every day, we know for a fact, is probably going to have a beneficial effect in terms of H. pylori. We certainly know that garlic can kill H. pylori. Garlic is a very potent antimicrobial substance in general. It contains a substance called um, allicin, which is a very potent antifungal, antibacterial, and even antiparasitic compound. So again, upping your intake of garlic, as long as your breath doesn't uh, start to smell too bad, is probably not going to be too much of a, a bad idea for you. One thing with the garlic, though, it is probably best to make sure that you don't take too much garlic if you're taking blood thinning medications because the garlic can make the blood even thinner and that may cause some problems so please do be careful if you do have thin blood or trouble with blood clotting. The third food I want to talk about is actually coconut oil. Coconut oil contains monolaurin or lauric acid and other what we call medium chain fatty acids that are very good at killing microbes in the digestive system. We're not 100% sure whether coconut oil on its own can kill off H. pylori, but we do know that it has a number of other very beneficial effects on the body, and it, it can also have a, a killing effect on some of the other bugs that live in your digestive system, like candida and parasites, and possibly other bacteria that may be growing over, uh, maybe overgrowing, should I say, further down your digestive system. The fourth food I want to talk about is actually uh, olive oil. Now, we all know what olive oil is and we probably have plenty of it. Great for salads, it's great for putting in cooking, and there are substances within the olive oil called polyphenols that in certain studies have been shown to kill H. pylori. And then we move on to fruits. Certain studies or some studies, kind of weak studies, they're not really convincing, I might say, suggest that strawberry extract bilberry extract, uh, blackberry extract, and some of the other berry extracts may also have an anti-H. pylori effect. One berry that we know for sure has an anti-H. pylori effect is cranberry. So drinking cranberry juice may be effective with H. pylori. And actually, cranberry juice can be very, very helpful also when you have urinary tract infections as well, because it can be very, very uh, harmful to the bad bacteria that overgrow in the uh, urinary tract. The next food I want to talk about is broccoli, or particularly broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts contain a substance called sulforaphane, and we know that the sulforaphane in experiments can also have a very strong anti-H. pylori effect. The next food that I want to talk about, uh, or really not food, but more spices and herbs, we know that uh, turmeric, which is used in Eastern cooking, is very anti-inflammatory, it can soothe the digestive system, and it may have an antimicrobial effect as well, particularly against H. pylori. Then we have chili. Chili is a little bit paradoxical, because you'd think a hot chili pepper could make things worse in the digestive system if you've got heartburn and reflux type symptoms, and actually that's the case. Chili doesn't work for everybody. I found that some people can tolerate a little bit of chili, and it seems to bring them benefit and calm things down in the gut. But other people, they get a nasty reaction to it, and it actually causes more irritation to the digestive system. And so you've just got to be careful with that one. We also have green tea. Green tea has been shown certainly in mice to inhibit and kill off H. pylori, so it may have that kind of beneficial effect in human beings as well. So you might want to switch your coffee or your black tea for green tea while ever you have H. pylori. And then finally, we have licorice. You can get licorice in sort of sweet shops. As long as it's really good quality salted licorice, we know for a fact that licorice can actually help to not only kill H. pylori, but it can also soothe and calm the stomach tissue down as well. 
Now I wrote a book called The H. pylori Diet and within that book I actually explain my feelings around these foods. We know these foods do have some kind of anti-H. pylori activity but we don't know how much of each food needs to be eaten on a daily basis. We don't know how frequently those foods need to be eaten and we don't know for how long they need to be eaten in order to definitely get rid of H. pylori. In other words, there are no rules for eating these foods at all. It's just try them, see if they make you feel better, and that's not really a scientific approach to eliminating H. pylori. What I recommend you do is take a look at my book, The H. pylori Diet, because not only does it teach you which foods help to uh, work against H. pylori, but it also teaches you which foods to avoid to improve your digestive function in general. And finally, that book also provides a number of supplement protocols that we know for sure work because we've used them with thousands of people around the world. And those supplement protocols are a little bit more potent than just consuming the foods. And they definitely knock out the H. pylori in the vast majority of people we use them with. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. My name is Dave Pompers from hpylorisymptoms.com and I look forward to catching up with you again really soon. Cheers.